Our inner critic is sneaky. Sometimes our negative self-talk is very clear. We call ourselves names, we're hard on ourselves for not living up to our expectations, we beat ourselves up in our minds, which leaves us feeling defeated and really low. Sometimes though, it's not this obvious. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how your inner critic is just a symptom of the true underlying problem and why you need to know what the real cause is so you can heal your relationship with your self-talk. Welcome to the Let's Talk Self Talk channel. I am your guide, Heather Thatcher, and I am so grateful that you're here. As a critical care registered nurse for almost a decade and a Reiki master teacher, I realized that even though people came into the hospital with physical conditions, many of those were a manifestation of what was going on from within. So it's my goal for this channel to help you completely reprogram your negative self talk to support your well being and help you become who you were meant to be. Last week on my story of overcoming negative self-talk, I talked about how this belief that I was terrible at all things communication was really affecting my life. I was already shy to begin with, but then this belief started to take hold and I became even more quiet. I remember the first time someone laughed at me for asking a question. I was in grade one and I was six years old and I asked for help with an art project that we were working on. We were doing something with horses and wagons and I don't really remember much about what we were making really but there was a point in the project where you needed an adult to help you out. You had colored in your horses and cut out the wagon pieces and you needed an adult to help you attach the two of them with this little brass fastener thingy so that it would be able to move and I really hope I'm describing that well enough uh, so you kind of get the idea. So when I got to that point where I needed help I asked the parent volunteer who was talking with my teacher at the time to help me hitch my horses. Because that's what we were doing, right? Hitching up those horses to the wagon. But obviously they thought it was really funny and they both laughed when they helped me. But I was mortified. I didn't understand what I had said wrong. And my self-talk started thinking of how I should have said it differently and what I could have said so that I wouldn't be laughed at. And so I started to keep my questions and my thoughts inside. And I got so used to not voicing my ideas that I struggled to talk with friends because I didn't know how to find that break in the conversation to join in. Fast forward a little bit and I was writing longer papers that needed editing and our teachers encouraged us to get them proofread. And so I would pour my heart into the work and then I found the proofreading process a little harsh. And if you've ever been in my corner of the internet, I'm sure you've noticed that I wear my vulnerability on my sleeve and I'm a very sensitive person. So when I was receiving a critique of my work through this proofreading process, my interpretation of this was that it was a personal attack, which it wasn't. It was another person's opinion of what I had written and I didn't have to agree with what they said. But my self-talk was telling me that I wasn't good at writing and asking questions and talking and I noticed all of the moments in my life that proved this to be true. That's how core beliefs work. For me, saying things like, oh don't share that, no one cares, or why did you speak up, it didn't add anything. But the truth is, wounds inflicted by our self-talk like this go much deeper and connect with those core beliefs. Core beliefs are something that we often form in childhood, but we can develop new ones at any point in our life. Usually though, when they appear later in life, it's due to some kind of emotional or energetic trauma. Once a core belief is formed, it acts as a magnet that attracts information that proves it to be true and pushes away the information that shows it to be wrong. So for me, and there's one core belief that I sucked at all forms of communication, my memory grabbed onto all those times that I heard people say, I can't believe you said something like that, that's terrible, or your writing is awful, you really should start over, or this whole section just needs to be redone. This core belief of mine also noticed all the instances that I had to ask a question multiple times to get the answer that I was looking for. In my brain, this further enforced the belief that I was terrible at talking because I had to ask a few times to get the answer. However, knowing what I know now, I understand that some of the people in my life were unintentionally enforcing this core belief because they kind of enjoyed making me ask the question as many times as possible, even though they actually knew which answer I was after. A little frustrating. I grew up thinking that I was terrible at communication, and so my already quiet nature just went even more into itself. And then I started my nursing program at university, and our very first video lab was on communication. And holy smokes, I cannot even begin to describe the terror that I felt when I learned that our first video recorded project would be graded for how well I spoke to this actor that was hired to test 
with my communication skills, both in what I said as well as my body language. And we'd be doing this as a group in front of 11 other classmates. We'd be reviewing our videos. So in fact, the word terror doesn't even come close to it. My self-talk was reminding me of all of those times of this core belief that I was terrible at this and I was about to be proven right. But, and you knew that there was a but coming. I completed the assignment and got recorded on this video thing and then we were watching the playbacks as a group together and my teacher kept pointing out all of the excellent communication strategies I was using. What? She talked about my gentle nature, my eye contact, my nodding of my head, the repeating of what I was hearing, asking for clarification, listening without interrupting, sharing appropriate information, all of the things that would make for a great conversation. And I left that class feeling confused. All of my life I thought I was awful at this, but a complete stranger who doesn't know me kept praising me for my strengths. So this challenged that core belief that I wasn't great at communicating. So I decided to experiment a little bit. Instead of going to my family, my regular proofreaders, before handing in my next assignment, I just wrote from the heart and I crossed my fingers that my professor would like the paper. And to my surprise, instead of getting my typical hard fought for B minus grade on a paper, I received an A with a handwritten comment that said she liked my conversational writing style. And just like that, this core belief was shattered. I no longer listened to any of that subtle self-talk that was trying to keep me quiet. And this is why though, trying to cover up negative self-talk with positive thinking doesn't work. Think about it. Your core belief attracts that which proves it to be true and it pushes away everything else that disagrees with this belief. So even if I had started saying to myself, I'm good at writing, back at that time, my core belief would hear those in the same way that voice from the, of the adult sounded in those Peanuts cartoons, you know, like It would just like be this easily dismissible whatever. So to heal your negative self-talk, you just can't throw positive statements at them because your core beliefs won't let those words stick. They're just gonna bounce off of you. So to heal your self-talk and your relationship with your inner critic, you have to do the inner work first, which is precisely what we're gonna get into next week when we talk about the second part of my five-step framework for overcoming negative self-talk. Before I let you go today, I want to invite you to join me and an empowered group of souls that are going to be starting my free workshop series to help you ditch negative self-talk for good. The first workshop is going to be released on September 5th, 2019. So check in the description below for the link to get on the wait list and have your invitation sent along to you. You're also gonna get a free present from my heart to yours. So check out the details for this workshop series here or in the description below. I hope you have a lovely week, you beautiful soul, and I will see you here next Tuesday when we're gonna talk about the next part of my framework. See you there.